Join us for the very first IFL Live at London's Indigo at the O2, Sunday, August the 13th, with me, Coogan Cassius, and some very special guests, Eddie Hearn, Darren Barker, Johnny Fisher, and more. Tickets now on sale. So in the words of Eddie Hearn... You get up, you dress up, and you fucking show up. Oscar Bevis for IFL TV. Delighted to be joined by Mr. Sean O'Hagan. Sean, thanks for giving me some of your time. Um, this just has a massive, massive fight feel, doesn't it? I think this one does, yeah. Of all the fights, um, I think this one does have that big fight feel. Um, it's one that we'll be looking forward to. And we knew that one day it would come round. And it, it, here it is. We got it neutral territory, kind of cup final style as well. Yes, we're halfway, aren't we? Uh, Are you surprised that Lee didn't? I mean, obviously, I don't know what went on behind the scenes. I would have expected Lee to maybe push for, for Nottingham. No, it's, it's always difficult football stadiums. I think there's something like a two or three week window. Um, I think it's down to pitches and the involvement in playoffs and promotions and relegations, that sort of thing. So, no, it, we're, we're no surprise, really. In terms of the fight, um, was it a fight that I'm not going to say long overdue, but when you've got the featherweights and the featherweight is seen absolutely flying in this country, it's always been Lee and Josh that have kind of been one. We've always put together and gone, this is a fight that has to happen. So not too long overdue, but a fight that's kind of been there and a fight that needed to happen. Yeah, I mean, it's a fight that's been lurking for quite a while now, isn't it? Um, but I think they've done the right thing. They've both, uh, they've both gone down the separate paths and all of a sudden them paths have kind of collided and there's no, there's no other way to go now, is there? It's got to be this. Um, but yeah, we're pleased it's here. It was a fight that's been waiting to happen. Um, we're, we're good with it. See, they had two very contrasting spells during that lockdown period. I heard Josh and Lee both speak about it, actually. Um, obviously, Josh took his first professional defeat and Lee kind of burst on to the scene during that time. Um, what do you kind of make of Lee's career and his rise? Because it has been a very rapid rise, especially to this, this kind of world level. Yeah, I mean, I think um, they've, they've actually gone down similar paths. I mean, saying that there with uh, when Lee boxed Kanzo and um, Josh Botts, Maurizio Lara. What you've got to remember, and people need to remember, is that Kanzo and Josh were on a collision course. They'd both done three full camps, only for the fight to fall through. So Maurizio Lara got a washed out Josh Warrington, and Lee got a washed out Kanzo, unfortunately. But I'm a firm believer in you can only fight whoever's in front of you. Things could have been very, very different there, couldn't they? It's funny how it's worked out and now we've got the fight we want. Um, I suppose I say the fight we want, that's because it's a domestic fight. There's just a different feel. Like I said, there's a big fight feel and I know Eddie was saying earlier, it just feels like one of them old school fights. Do you feel like that as well? Yeah, I think it has. It's got a little bit of a different feel to it, hasn't it? Um, and genuinely, this is one of them fights that you're not going to have to push and you're not going to have to... You don't need any needle to kind of get it going. I think this fight sells itself. And it, it was always going to happen. Always going to happen with this one. But yeah, it does have that old school feel to it, yeah. yeah. We know there's no needle when Josh has bought Lee a birthday cake. So, um. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know if he's that or not, but I, I'm going to make a little joke about that, where eggs come from, but I won't bother. <laughs> Um, in terms of what we might see in the ring, um, Josh is never in a dull fight, Lee's never in a dull fight. I know, obviously, there'll both be game plans put in by you and put in by Ben, but there has to be a period of the fight, surely, where them two just go head-to-head, -head, knuckle to knuckle, and uh, and they meet in the middle. Yeah, I mean, I think that's inevitable. That it's going to happen, isn't it? Um, game plans in place, whatever. It's You know and I know that neither of them can resist the urge to just stand there a little bit longer than they should and let their hands go. And I think that's what's going to happen no matter how much. I mean, Ben will be urging Lee not to get involved. They'll be shouldered on. They'll be looking at backhand over there after the little stab downstairs to the belly. I'll be working against that, obviously. But we both know that what happens is when it all gets heated and we get into them championship rounds, it's going to end up in the middle, isn't it? We know that. So game plans aside, that's what it's going to be. It'll be a bandstormer. Yeah, because I suppose Josh is definitely the more energetic of the two fighters and Lee the more powerful of the two. So is it kind of obvious what the two, what, what the other's going to try and bring, I guess? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure about that's right, about the more powerful at all. When you have a look, um, aching it a little bit, but let's not remember the last Kanzo fight. 
Kanzo, uh, sorry, not Kanzo, Fat Maurizio, or Lara Fat. He came and went through motions. And he did. That was apparent to anybody. I'm not taking anything away from Lee. You can only fight who's in front of you. But I didn't see no devastating punching there. Or, you know, people seem to forget that the people we've stopped have been very, very good fighters. I mean, Kiko there landed his best shots, broke his jaw, he went on with a broken jaw and levelled him in, in the same round over it round after. I think it was round after, wasn't it? Um, and absolutely blasted him there. So I think power-wise, I don't think there's much in it. I really don't. I think intensity. I think we bring far more intensity. Um, punch rate and punch ratios that I've been looking at earlier on. I think it lies with us. I think there's only one winner. Sean, I don't know if it's any easier to talk about now, but I'm going to mention quickly Oklahoma. I know we've spoken to Maxi since. Um, how does it kind of feel now time's progressed a little bit? Um, I guess you would have accepted it a bit more, but still hurts. Oh, of course it hurts. I mean, listen, not for me. Um, I'm only his trainer. I think for Maxi, always what he's done is he's, he's got better and better and better. And what I'm going to say now is that you have to disappointment and... We felt we'd been very, very hard done by. I think the rest of the world agrees with us there. There's only one person who believes that he won that fight, and he's kidding himself, is George Cambosas. Um, 79 countries around the world. I'd just ask anybody to just have a little look at it, see what you all think. But no, it don't get any easier. Um, they've robbed a kid of his, his lifetime ambition, haven't they? You know, and they've done it blatantly in front of everyone. But I don't think you've seen the last of Maxi Hulls. I think what we've got to do is we've got to take positives away from that fight and say that that, that would display of a lifetime, wouldn't it? You know, he's getting better and better and better. And no matter what you do, you can't keep talent down, can you? He'll be back. What did you think when you heard that the judge who scored the fight widely in favour of George Cambosis was then back at his job and judging fights and scoring fights the week after? Well, he shouldn't be, should he? I think anybody now who has a look at judges and they see his name on that list, um, they need to be very, very aware, don't they? Or very wary. Um, but I, I would never, ever... He needs removing, don't he? Simple as that. He needs removing. It, that, just absolutely ridiculous. But yeah, he shouldn't be allowed to judge. Do you look at it as just pure incompetence, <coughs> a man who's watching a fight and is seeing something completely different from everything else? Or do you kind of look at it and think... He's perhaps got a predetermined winner. How, how do you kind of view it? I think he's got a predetermined big fat envelope being put in his back pocket somewhere. That's how I see it. And there's no other reason for it. I mean, how, how can you explain that? You can't explain that. Some people might knock me for saying that. But, you know, top rank have invested um, in George Cambosas. They've taken him on board. They're not going to let him lose. State commission, local commission rules. Come on. It was absolute, absolutely stunk of uh, wrongdoing did that fight. Absolutely stunk. It was a brilliant run Maxi was on and that run's coincided over quite a few years to get to where he got to. Um, I know his dreams will be to get back to that place, but again, it's going to take time. Um, you're adamant that Maxi's sitting there now and going, no, no, I'm, I'm here, I'm, I'm going to come back. Um, Maxi Hughes is going to get to that place again. Oh, yeah, of course he is, without a doubt. You can't, you can't put on a performance like that and walk away, can you? So, no, we will be back and he will get what's uh, rightfully his, you know. So, we're on with it now anyway and we'll have to see what the outcome is, you know. Join us for the very first IFL Live at London's Indigo at the O2, Sunday, August the 13th, with me, Coogan Cassius, and some very special guests, Eddie Hearn, Darren Barker, Johnny Fisher and more. Tickets now on sale. So, in the words of Eddie Hearn... You get up, you dress up, and you fucking show up. <laughs>